Hey everyone, it's Phil again. Uh, it's the next day uh, after Will and I talked. Uh, I know I said Charlie and Tyler would be here, but Tyler can't make it. Things come up. But uh, what's that in the sky? Is it a bird? It's a plane? No, it's Charlie Esser with his marvelous review of Superman number six. Hello, Charlie. Hi, heroes. Welcome to the Marvel section of the DC Universe. Um, <laughs> happy to talk uh, the classic super hi- Superman number six. Um, I don't know if it's a classic, but it does it does raise what I think is the most prescient question uh, that will be asked and answered throughout history: is when Lois Lane wears the super uh, wears the Batman armor, does she sound like Batman? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, so we open up with, uh, you know, we had the Eradicator fighting Superman, Superman. Um, oh, actually, wait, before we even get into that, just want to say real quick, if you saw the front cover, the Warner Archives, okay, Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels coming to DVD, great. A uh, bunch of other stuff, but hey, most important, Thundar the Barbarian now on DVD, kids. <laughs> Jack Kirby's, yes, Jack Kirby was instrumental in the original designs of the Thunder of the Barbarian cartoon. Jack Kirby's greatest work, in my opinion. Yeah, but, 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 but make sure they are out because did you see the back cover where it says Constantine and Lucifer and iZombie and all those are out on, uh, Blu-ray? Well, I guess some people, people were up in arms because people went to the website and Constantine wasn't available. The rest of them were, but not Constantine. Aww. Well, you notice that he's the one that doesn't have the Blu-ray box on the bottom. <laughs> so take DVD and Blu-ray discs. Constantine. Oh, actually, no, they do say Constantine now on Blu-ray and DVD. So that's right. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, as a DC fan, you should be used to disappointment by now. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike Marvel, which never disappoints. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to say that uh, Superman uh, DC Universe Rebirth number six, still holding the line at two ninety nine. Um, although I'll talk about some of the things I think we lose at two ninety nine because it was something that struck me today hmm. about this book that I was like, huh, there's no way to address this issue because of this reason that it's only two ninety nine. What you get when you buy a Marvel book for that extra buck it's starting to add up in my opinion. Okay, so we're opening up. Uh, Superman versus the Eradicator. Um, last issue, Superman had, like, uh, merged with all the souls of all of Krypton, and so he's all super-powered, more so, and, and Eradicator has one soul left, dun-dun-dun, and that's what's powering him. Um, <clears throat> Bat Lois, uh, pulls, uh, Jonathan Kent aside, uh, he, he's getting the, uh, the, 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 the Jarvis slash Friday Narrative. I, I guess. I guess. I guess. In Batman ar- ar- armor, it's all called Alfred. Uh, the Alfred dialogue. That atmospheric temperature is critical. And uh, and this is the thing that makes you wonder. Is it says John, stay back in the in little Batman in a little electronic altered voice. And you got to wonder: Is does she sound like Batman right then? Because um, you have to assume that Batman's armor is going to make you sound like Batman. Because of course, it can't sound like Bruce Wayne. And if Bruce Wayne has a cold, it has to adjust everyone to sound exactly like Batman. So, yeah. Anyway, um, then she pulls up the face max because, I guess, critical atmospheric temperatures. Eh, let's sh- show the face because, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, h- however, Jonathan is getting all into the fighting because, yay, fights. <laughs> um, Superman and Eradicator duke it out cause a bunch of moon quakes pretty much destroy the lunar bat cave which will become a point next and then um during the release of the kryptonian souls um soups figure out figures out what soul was left in the eradicator what soul was left in the re- eradicator uh phil do you know yes crypto Crypto, arf, arf, whom we still don't know what crypto this is, which crypto this is. Is this crypto from this universe? Did did they bring the crypto from the other yeah, universe? No, I, I I I couldn't remember for a while, but yeah, they, they did. I'm pretty sure they did introduce this one in New Fifty Two. So. so this is the New Fifty Two crypto. Okay, I'm sure, yeah. Okay, and he and then Superman pulls crypto out of the Eradicator. Sure, works for me. Uh-huh. And then 
and they do laser eye cryptos and Superman punch on the eradicator, the unworthy, cause a big old mushroom cloud on the moon, making everybody all panicky, and then somehow Crypto in the last scene gets his cape and collar back. Oh, I ah, I see what they did. They took the eradicator's cape mm-hmm. and put it on Crypto. Because, of course, Crypto gave his cape to Superboy. I see what happened there. Um, <laughs> Superman puts the flag back, puts the uh, thing back, and they do the live stream from the moon saying, Superman is here to say! Dun, 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 dun. And, of course, everything in um, Times Square has Superman on it, because, sure. Well, actually, just the big one. It looks like they're actually advertising some kind of clown thing on some of the side stuffs. Sure. Uh, um you know, uh, Jonathan is real excited about watching Superman get a key to Metropolis on the TV. This is actually a little disturbing to me because I'm sitting here wondering, is he like passing him off as the self off as this universe's Superman? Uh, no, I know like, um, no, in the other books and even in Justice League, yeah, like, I'm I mean, pretty sure possible. everyone, everyone's like, you know, everyone's like, Superman died, you know, who are you? And I know at least that Justice League knows he's from the, uh, another universe. Yeah, I know. It kind of seems to me like everyone's just saying, this is Superman, he's back. So I don't know if everyone's just sort of ignoring it or accepting it. But anyway, we get a nice little s- th- scene where uh, <laughs> Clark gives Jonathan his first pair of glasses. Um, <laughs> and he's the best part of part of the glasses is when we take them off. And we get to the moon, and we see Batman's all, you broke my face! Actually, no, they're, at, they're on the Watchtower space station, and Batman's like, you broke my face! And Clark says, well, that's okay, we're here to fix it, me and Superboy! Hi! Um, <laughs> you can see that Wonder Woman's happy to see Superboy following in the superhuman tradition, and Batman's all scowly. They broke my moon base. These guys are mean. Um, no! <laughs> Yeah, uh, I liked it. it. It was a good book. We're gonna give it, um, <laughs> we're gonna give it, uh, uh, three and a half, uh, father son laser eyes out of five. Uh, real good book. Uh, w- worth the fun of it if you pick it up, uh, despite the questions. Uh, so what you don't get at 299 is a letters page. I noticed that. It's like, hey, do no, do no DC books have letter pages, even as Marvel is reintroducing and pushing letter pages as this great uh, fan communication tool? Yeah, now that you say that, yeah, I don't believe any DC book has a, a fan page, a letter page. We've already, we, we've already gone into the fact that you don't get a what happened last issue page. <laughs> so you don't get a what happens last issue page. You don't get an interaction page. And, of course, you don't get a digital copy. So... Hold the line at two ninety nine, and if you're already in it, then that, that's a good deal. But if you're just shining on, yeah, maybe less so. But hey, Rebirth's doing well, so maybe they they know what they're doing. They're getting you hooked on Rebirth, and then then you'll just keep on buying them because you don't have because you know you can never come back. You can never skip an issue because there won't be a catch up page, mm-hmm. and there won't be a letters page of people talking about what happened last issue. So you're always flying blind. So you got to stick. They're, they're getting you addicted, and they're not they're not. Giving you a way to walk away. Um, but no, but that's okay, DC. Keep on making great Superman. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a Superman fan. Official. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. All right. So, if uh, that's it, uh, I already did my social media and everything with Lilith. Charlie, where can people find you? Well, you can always find me on the Southgate Media Network, on... Uh, Super Connectivity, All New Marvel Roundup, of course here on World's Finest when I do a Marvelous Review, and on the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel where Phil and I do Gamma Cast. And if you'd like to tweet along with me as I live tweet the Incredible Hulk on 7 o'clock on Saturdays, and you're going to do my best to keep on live tweeting Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and now Legends of Tomorrow, since i got to step it up for Zach because we're doing that Legends of Tomorrow podcast uh, together. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle for quality. And of course, if you want to write to me in that old fashioned email way, the way our mods and pods did centuries ago, you can do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. All right. Well, that's it uh, for this week. Come back next week. Uh, until then, ponder this thought. 
who is the greater friend to superheroes, uh, Crypto or Charlie Esser. Good night. Thank you.